Is she the most dangerous former liberal on the campaign trail? Hard to argue that Jordi Wilson-Raybould, the former liberal justice minister, is making headlines almost daily. She was name-checked multiple times in the leadership debate just last week, and today she published this, a new memoir that gives more of her perspective of her time in government, specifically the SNC-Lavalin affair. Remember, the Ethics Commissioner found that Justin Trudeau had violated the Conflict of Interest Act by improperly pressing Jody Wilson-Raybould to stop a criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. But wait a second, you, you might think, I've heard about that before. This whole affair was already litigated in the last election in 2019. That's true. It was, but today, Ms. Wilson-Raybould has released a book that details the affair all over again and lots of other issues, but also allegations that Mr. Trudeau, she says, told her to lie, something that he has denied. So why publish this book now, days before Election Day? What's new in the book? Let's find out. All right, joining me now, Jody Wilson-Raybould. Great to have you back on the show. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. In politics, timing's everything. We're five days left in this election, and you bring out your new book, and here we go again on SNC-Lavalin, and you essentially say, I mean, well, the central allegation is Justin Trudeau told me to lie. Um, just explain before, and he's responded, but you're now explicitly... At first you said he thought he was telling you to lie. Now you're saying he did tell you to lie. Is that right? Well, I, I mean, first of all, I'm really pleased that the book is uh, is out t today. And, and certainly this book has been uh, some time in coming. And, and it does you know, speak to the, the SNC-Lavalin um, affair, but it's not the entirety of the book. Um, you know, in terms of the discussions and what media has been reporting around SNC and, and Justin Trudeau's response, I, I detail quite uh, clearly and, and vividly my feelings um, in that series of meetings with him, how I felt. Uh, and I think that, um, and what I felt was being asked. And I think that um, I'll leave it to Canadians to decide based on the, the significant public record that exists in terms of what I've said, what I've right. said in this but, book and what others have said. But let's just be explicit. What did you believe he was telling you to lie about specifically? Well, I, I mean, I talk about, I go into this and then talking about the conversations that we had that have been um, out in the public domain um, since 2019 about the specific prosecution and the reality of my, at the time when I was the Attorney General being pressured to interfere with the prosecution. Um, I know that um, SNC has been discussed at length and, and certainly forms the backdrop for a significant part of my experience um, in the federal government and in federal politics. And that's why I've uh, uh, placed excerpts or, you know, discussions about um, that reality for me from a very personal perspective in terms of how I felt. And again, I will say that the Prime Minister is in, or Justin Trudeau is entitled to say what he wants and deliver the lines that he wants. But um, I detail very clearly my experience. And I think that um, people that read the book can judge for themselves. Here's what he said. I mean, he's been obviously asked about this on the campaign trail, uh, obviously intensely. Here's what he said in response to your book. I did not want her to lie. I would never do that. I would never ask her that. That is simply not true. Um, these issues that were brought up uh, have been talked about over the past couple of years now. They've been studied out in committee, the Globe and others have written on them extensively. They were fully looked at before the last election. So he says, I did not want her to lie. I would never do that. I would never ask her to do it. It is simply not true. He says what you're writing is, again, these are his words, simply not true. Is he lying or what? Or are you? Is it he said, she said? 
Well, what I what I can say and and how I have always um, lived my life, uh, both in private and in my public life, uh, I am notorious for being a copious note taker and for um, relaying my experiences. And that's what I've sought to do in speaking um, the truth and um, providing you know some insight into the experiences that I've had um, as a federal minister and as a member of parliament. Do you, you're a note taker, but you also recorded conversations with the then clerk of the Privy Council. Um, one, some people think that's a sign that you, you shouldn't have been trusted. Others think it's a sign that you were trying to get an insurance policy. Did you ever think of recording a conversation with Justin Trudeau? And did you ever record a conversation with him? Well, no, I haven't uh, ever recorded a, a conversation with Justin Trudeau, and and uh, I do go into speaking about my reasons why I uh, recorded that conversation with the then clerk of the the Privy Council, and that has a lot to do with the reality and the environment that was unfolding around me. But I but I will say, and I know the media has focused a great deal on SNC um, with respect to you know and, and drawing the connection to my book coming. Out, but the book is far more than, than SNC. But it, you know, it is a significant reality of my experience as, as a federal uh, cabinet minister, and, and is reflective of more of the dynamics around um, governance in this country, how government operates. And um, I hope through this book to provide some insight into that. But the timing—it's uh, not lost on anybody. Is this an attempt to relitigate? a lot of things that were part of the last election on SNC and, and bring them up. In other words, don't trust Justin Trudeau. He's not the guy that you think he is. He's not the feminist prime minister that he says he is. Uh, he doesn't tell the truth. These are all in your book. And, I, and again, I'm just trying to wonder, did you time it specifically to hurt him in this election campaign? I I have been um, through uh, you know the last couple of years been very reflective on my experience and it was um, a difficult decision for me to decide to to put those reflections in 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 a book and, and have that book published. I had announced that I was writing this book and and announced through my publisher that it was going to be published in the fall. Um, that wasn't a secret and um, the publication date today, September 14th, and I'm proud of the book, was announced uh, before what I think to be a very unnecessary election, um, having been called by, uh, by Justin so Trudeau. So it wasn't moved up? Just, I just want to be clear. You're saying that the timing of this in the last week of the federal election, and this, you know, you're, you've name-checked in the debate, you're saying the timing is not also political, that it's coincidental, that it's not a political way to influence people's vote on Justin Trudeau and the Liberal government? Well, I, again, I mean, people can look at the timeline of when I announced the book, and I don't necessarily think that that um, is, I mean, the issue for me, um, but, you know, the September 14th date was announced before the federal election was was called. Um, you know, I, I'm happy to, to speak about this book. I feel, um, as the member of parliament for Vancouver Granville, as a former cabinet minister, um, uh, that my experiences within government government are something that I'm open to talking about. And beyond that, um, having conversations about really important issues that are facing our country. Um, and, you know, one was in the newspaper today talking about Indigenous reconciliation, talking about how government works, talking about the nature and the reality of partisan politics and its influence. Mm. Um, so having discussions around these important issues while uh, people are considering how to exercise their Franchise how, franchise, how to vote. Um, you know, these are discussions that we need to have, and I'm happy to contribute to that discussion. You, you, one of the things you talk about is when you were shuffled away from being the, the Minister of Justice. And you said, I was adamant in my belief, you write on page 186, and I was being shuffled because of SNC-Lavalin from the first moment. The Prime Minister and Jerry Butts were adamant this was not the case. Those positions won't change. But you said... You said, I believe I was shuffled, you say, frankly, for improper and unethical reasons. Isn't, I don't know what the motive are, and, and we can always impute motive on things, but isn't it the purview of the prime minister to shuffle whoever he or she wants? Uh, they can do it, at, you serve at the pleasure of the prime minister. If they want to move you, they can move you. Um, is it really your right to decide what cabinet position you get or not? 
Well, I, I, I'm, first of all, I, of course, it is the, the prerogative of the prime minister, any prime minister, to determine uh, individuals that he places into particular portfolios. I've never disputed that. In fact, I, I, I state that in, in the book. Um, what I, I have relayed in, in part of the book is the, um, the feelings that I had around the, the shuffle when I was moved from Minister of Justice, Attorney General, into that Veterans Affairs, um, and I will say, um, a significant portfolio that I value deeply in serving uh, as the Minister of Veterans Affairs. Um, but I, I sought to, in this book, to relay, as I said, the feelings around that. And um, I do not believe that uh, I can determine which portfolio I am in. But what I have sought to do is reflect how I felt about being moved um, from one portfolio to the other and, and frankly, being offered other portfolios. Um, when you met with Justin Trudeau in Vancouver, uh, then he did a press conference after you had a private meeting and he came out and said her, her place in cabinet speaks for itself. Um, it was as if to affirm that you had had a conversation with him and he was satisfied that you were going to stick around. It didn't happen. Uh, was he telling the truth then about, did that accurately reflect your conversation or were you, was that not a truthful illustration of your conversation with him privately? Well, I mean, as as yeah, people probably have have potentially read, I think a lot of people. I go into great detail about those meetings that I had with Justin Trudeau in in Vancouver, and um, and reflect on on the nature of those conversations and how they unfolded in terms of my feelings and the lead up to my uh, eventual um, relaying to him of my resignation or my impending resignation from cabinet. So um, I go into detail about that in. in the book. Does he deserve to be the Prime Minister of Canada? Well, I mean, it's, it's not for me to say. I mean, it's for me to say in terms of my my vote and, and going into the ballot box as I did yesterday and voting. And um, it's for Canadians to decide. I'm looking at the leaders and the parties. Um, and I hope uh, the individuals, particularly in, in their riding, what they, they represent and what they offer and, and voting for the best person to represent that represent them. I mean, I, I will say that uh, um, Justin Trudeau has had six years and he's the only leader that has a track record, record to be um, measured against in terms of what he's done and, and what he's promised and what he's not done. Do you regret running as a liberal? Do you regret your time in government? I mean, that's uh, those are important questions, and, and I've reflected on them at a great deal, and, and they form the basis of my writing this book. I believe I'm in the place that I'm supposed to be. I have learned an extraordinary amount, and I'm grateful um, for the opportunity to have held the ministerial positions that I have held, and um, so honored to have been the member of parliament for Vancouver Granville for six years. And, um, you know, there are times, and I reflect on some of these times in the book where I I question that, but um, at the end of the day, and the last word in my book is 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 grateful, and I'm uh, grateful for what I've learned, and also um, from what I learned and what I'm going to continue to do in terms of advocating for um, a different kind of, of politics, um, being very vigilant about the nature of our democracy, and ensuring um, you know social justice issues, indigenous reconciliation, are are remain at the forefront of our discussions. Would you rule? Out running again in federal politics you mean sure, I, or for any office well I, I, I never say never and I said in very um, purposefully in my letter that I am um, leaving federal politics for now I'm not going to rule out anything I mean I think that um, we're in a really important period and people are putting their names forward to represent Canadians and everybody that does that I applaud it's important um, for me right now um, given the nature of of you know, partisanship and, and how things are uh, unfolding, it's not the best place for me um, to contribute and find a place to contribute as best I can. But never say never. Never say never. I got to leave it there. Jody Wilson-Raybould, I really appreciate you joining us again. Thank you.